Hi, welcome everybody. This is Daryl McHale Brooks of the On Fire Show, and I have a very special guest, Mr. Carl McCall. Thank you. You can say you go ahead and talk. Yeah, my name is Carl McCall, and uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Trenton. I was born and raised in Trenton. Spent most of my uh, childhood in North Trenton on Ray Street and uh, New Willow Street. I'm very familiar with Trenton. Uh, residents, neighborhood, and uh, I'm here today to speak about the homicide of my daughter took place on the, uh, December the 5th, 2021. Wow. You know, uh, I've known you for, I don't know, how, 20, 25 years. And, you know, I remember the time we you had an award ceremony, SCLC gave you a award. I mean, you're known, in fact, you're known all over the county. Uh, people know you because of your community service, but especially uh, your real estate company. You, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, people came to you for houses. I'm sure, you helped a lot of uh, people uh, get their first place to live. Yes, you know, real estate was a reward and occupation because it gave me the opportunity to uh -huh. uh, provide a first-time home buyers, especially women, mm -hmm. with houses. When at that particular time. Uh, a lot of Afro-American mm -hmm. ladies didn't think they could purchase a house. Right? Yeah. And I introduced them to programs that they had available mm -hmm. so that they could purchase properties. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it was that part of the, I assume that was what, you started in the 80s, early 80s? No, I started, 70s? I started real, sell real estate in 76. 76? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love, I used to go, you know, I used to help you out with some designs, but I, I used to love to sit down and talk to you about the history, you know, things that you've gone through. 
and uh, you know, as he was a military guy and black history and then the city of uh, Trenton. And uh, you know, I remember working at the, at the office and I met your, your daughters and uh, your, your granddaughter and yeah. uh, who's listening right now, as she said, yeah, yeah. so, mm -hmm. and so I remember Seiki, you know, you have, a, you have three, do three daughters, right? I have two, two daughters, a Seiki and a Shahida. Uh, oh, a Seiki and Shahida. And two granddaughters. Two, okay, I used to think one of your, the oldest, other's granddaughter was your daughter. All the, I used to think that all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you you know, two beautiful uh, daughters and, and two beautiful granddaughters. And, um, you know, when I found out about your daughter, uh, I didn't know, I didn't, because I, I, I lived in Philadelphia for over two years. So I didn't really know what would happen to your granddaughter, your daughter and uh, Seiki, and so, uh, you know, it hurt me, the fact that uh, said your daughter died that way yes. um, and of the fentanyl poisoning. Yes. poisoning. Yes. And it's sad, you know, because fentanyl poisoning, uh, you know, I th last year they killed over 100,000 people in America, especially young people. And it's, a, you know, it's, it's sad what fentanyl has done to young lives. Yes. And, uh, you know, so we basically, I invited you on to talk about what happened. Um, I know it hurts you because that's your daughter. Yes. And, uh, and the way she was, uh, the, way she, the way she died. Yes. So take us back to December of last year. Um, what happened? Well, well, basically it was really upsetting to me uh, what happened in, uh, her death, and then the way the investigation was implemented by the Trenton Police Department. There wasn't any investigation. But to give you a brief detail of a description of what happened was, uh, I was I was in the house, uh, 519 in Willow Street. That was my parents' house. We moved in the house in 1963, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, I was watching TV in the living room, and uh, I had to go to, to, the, to the, the bathroom, which was located across from the master bedroom mm -hmm. where Asaki was staying at. So I went to, in the hallway and looked into the bathroom. There was a young lady in the bathroom. She was nodding. Mm -hmm. right? So I called Asaki and asked Asaki to remove her. And I went uh, downstairs into the uh, recreation area in, in, the, in the basement. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I came back up. She, the lady, young lady, had been removed from the master uh, bathroom, and she was taken into the master bedroom. So I went back into the, the living room and watched television. I guess I watched television for just a few few minutes, and I was still concerned because I had told Seki to have the girl taken out of the house, take her out the house. Mm -hmm. I didn't want any problem. Is she a friend of your daughter's? No. 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 It's, uh, this is the first time I've ever seen that girl with my daughter. Wow. So uh, I went back to the master bedroom to tell my daughter to have the girl take the girl out. The door was locked. And I, I knocked on the door. The door was locked and kept banging on the door. And someone answered the door. It was the actual girl, right? So then as I walked into the, the bedroom, Seiki was uh, sitting straight up mm -hmm. against the wall. She had, she was, she was completely knocked out, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I sh tried to sh shake her, revive her, and I asked the girl what, what was happening. She just was running around. So I knew from my past experience and see seeing situations like that because I, um, I had seen people uh, intoxicated from drugs or anything like that, right? Uh, so, um, I called the police, police department at the 911 number and, and told them what had happened. And uh, when, when, when they arrived, uh, the police department and the first responding people, I was telling the police officer pretty much the same detailed description of what I'm mm -hmm. telling you of what happened because it happened so fast. I've never seen anything like that happen that fast. That was, it was unbelievable. So as soon as you were talking to her, and you know, and next thing you know, she was in she was in the bathroom or the bedroom. No, I I talked to her, and then within minutes, she was in the master bedroom, like sitting on the bed, just 
completely still. Mm, okay. And uh, it happens, like I said, it happens so fast, it, it amazed me because I'd never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. So after speaking with the police officer and explaining to the police officer, I had a pretty good idea of something that happened that would have to deal with drugs, mm -hmm. right? So I was telling the police officer that this young lady had went outside and brought something in the house that, you know, if they asked her some questions about uh, what had happened, mm -hmm. that um, she could give them a pretty good explanation of where she got the drugs from, right? Yes. But they, they just disregarded everything I was saying, mm -hmm. all right? Okay. So uh, no matter how many times I'm trying to explain it to these two police officers, they just, just, just disregarded everything I was trying to explain to them and how they should interrogate this young lady. Mm. But they just let her walk in and out of the house. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, never seen her before. No, I never seen her before. So I guess one of them went inside, and, and he he asked me to. Uh, it was it was a crime scene. I had to, to vacate the master bedroom and anybody else. He cleared the crime scene. So I really thought they were doing some type of investigation, but they never did. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, and I spoke with several uh, people at the police department, several detectives, chief detectives and I spoke with the mayor a couple times. Well, one time I spoke with the mayor, I had a meeting with the mayor and uh, I think it was captain. You, you, you met with the mayor, the captain. Captain Slack, yeah, Captain James Slack. Captain right? and Andrew Bobbitt, right? And Andrew Bobbitt. And at, at that meeting, you know, I was explaining to uh, the mayor and the captain what happened in detail, like basically mm -hmm. uh, same type of description. And um, the mayor, uh, I guess he uh, instructed uh, Mr. Slack to cooperate with me and provide me with the information they were permitted to give me, all right? But uh, after time went by and I got the toxicology report that indicated she Sakey passed away from uh, fentanyl. And see, fentanyl, I never knew anything about this fentanyl, but fentanyl is a, is a dangerous substance. Yeah, deadly drug. Deadly, deadly. drug. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I've seen, uh, I guess, illustrations or news video about them harvesting fentanyl in South America. Yeah, uh, South America and yeah. China. And China. And, and the, the, the people <clears throat> that harvest this crop, they're actually outfitted as if they're working in some kind of atomic energy plant. That's how dangerous this, this fentanyl is. Mm -hmm. But what is very disturbing to me, and I, I've been doing a little research on it, is how the uh, fentanyl, I guess is considered by some municipalities now, they've changed, some municipalities have changed as, a, as an overdose and it's a poisonous substance. Yes. So uh, what I, I was explaining to, to the mayor that, uh, for an example, I said, if you, if you uh, went into Tony's Pizza place to get a pizza pie and Tony put poisonous mushrooms on, on the pizza and you ate the whole pizza, did you die from indigestion or poison? Poison. And poison would be a, yes. a, a homicide, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So that's what I was trying to say. It's not an overdose. This, yeah, this, this is a homicide. This, this is a homicide. Somebody, you know, I was doing also research myself, uh, I guess the past three or four days uh, about fentanyl and the poison. And, you know, somebody could just, a, a little fentanyl, somebody could just put something in a bag, uh, lollipop, candy, um, or spray it on you, or put it, you know, somewhere close to your hand, shake something, anywhere on your body, touch it, you touch touch it, it. and you can die. You can die, right? So let's talk about, you know, one of the things I was so disturbed about the story is that, you know, you told me about the Trenton police and the detectives how uh, they basically did no type of investigation. If someone dies, and and, and this is the point I, I get so frustrated. Um, you know, when it comes to our black people yes, and uh, how, you know, it's just a black, uh, just a black woman, average black, don't, you know, no type of empathy and understanding and caring and investigation. There's another, there's another black person, uh, poison. And so it, it just, dis just disturbed me and I'm sure it disturbs the audience about, you know, when it comes to our black, especially black women, um, you know, how as a, as a people, they just, they don't really uh, care 
Uh, it's just another, I hate to use that word, but it's, a, it's just another nigga. You know, and, 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 and that is a disturbance that I, that I feel that's what's happening all across America. Well, see, what, what it is, it's uh, if I was a white man mm -hmm. explaining what had happened to their daughter while he was actually there, mm -hmm. I would have been treated entirely different. Yeah. So right. you felt that you were treated wrong? Oh, the, the police? Oh, I know I was treated wrong. Yeah. I know I was yeah. treated wrong. Being that I asked them for their policy and procedure on, on conducting and investigations, was, they never gave it to there me. There was there was nothing. They they didn't follow any protocol at all. Yeah, and they refused to give me the information, even though I asked the captain. Uh, wrote a subsequent letter to the mayor, mm -hmm. which uh, I read. And I, August the eighth, uh, I believe it was, yes. asking for his decision on whether they would initiate the investigation or just. I asked him what was his decision, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Never wrote me back. And, 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 and that's what I, I've been hearing, you know, when I talk to other people in the city about the, uh, this, this problem, serious problem with um, fentanyl. I mean, it's, uh, you know, when you see what's happening all across the country, people are dying of fentanyl poisoning, poisoning um, and, you know, college students, uh, mm -hmm. individuals. And now they're charging individuals now with fentanyl. With murder, murder, yeah. murder, yeah, murder. Charge, charge murder. But it's, it's so disappointing that our mayor and the police department, and I'm not saying all the police, but the, this detective and the captain, and you know, you have the chief of police, um, haven't done anything. No, I even spoke with uh, a detective at the county, and he acted like he wasn't concerned. He acted like it was my problem that I, I was there and mm -hmm. this happened to him mm -hmm. more so than look at uh, taking into consideration. When I was talking to him, mm -hmm. he tried to reverse and put it as I created the problem because it happened when I was actually there. Yeah. So right. you, you talk about this this young lady. Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever find or figure out who this young lady was? They got a name. They have a name. But they didn't do any investigation like they should have followed mm -hmm. up based on the information and facts that I gave gave them. Yeah. Art, no. uh, yeah. And, make, and also I had indicated to the police department. Two or three other young ladies within the next couple of months died the same way. And you know, they found them in bedrooms, if alleyways and basements. Right? How did yeah? No investigation. No investigation. How did it fentanyl get in a person's body? Right. Near a person who brought the fentanyl. And uh, you know, that says, you know, you know, uh, I remember I, I think it was Eisenhower says, says I think it might have been President Eisenhower was talking about the buck stops here. And a buck stops at um, at the mayor's office uh, because he's the mayor of the city of Trenton. And you know, when you have people are dying, we have more violent crimes than ever before, bad education, and you have a fentanyl problem, yes. uh, and we have a police force that people pay the tax dollars. You know, right. and when people pay tax dollars, you know that some tax dollars goes to the police department, right. and we should have a A plus police force. When especially comes with fentanyl, I mean it's it, it, it's just sad, you know what type of city we are in, and what it is, it's sad what type of America because they're allowing this to come through the borders. That's because of black people. Yeah, black people, and 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 that's and that's sad. You know, right. I remember you know this guy was in I was at a convention, and he he said his uh, son died of fentanyl, and he was in college, and they found the person that. Uh, Gave him it was a candy or in the kids in high school, fentanyl, and they pro uh, prosecuted. Right. They actually the police detectives, you know, they traced everything. I mean, we're living in we're we're, we're in two thousand, you know, we're in twenty two, where they can they have the technology, they have the cameras, you know, on the street cameras. Street, right. They can actually see where that girl went, you know, or especially in that area. They had a street camera mm -hmm. about 100 yards away 100 from yards, my house. 100 yards away. Yeah, that's right. And, and they, they took it down a couple months ago. And you, you telling me, did you ask about that street camera? Because it was right, if you have a street 100 yards away, they know where that girl went. They can trace, act, you know, you see in the movies, they can trace where she went at, you know, then oh, they yeah. can look at the other street and what street she walked down or what house that she went into. They have the technology and... And, and yeah, I believe because Aseki was black, a black girl, 
um, you know, they just don't consider that, you know, they, important. They could have found a person in in that, in, in days, right? With in the a day or two. With the, inf with the information that I provided them with, and with the information that the young girl could have provided, they could have found those people within a couple of days. Yeah. Matter of fact, I know I could have found them in a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. From my connections mm -hmm. and people that I, I have dealt with before. Mm -hmm. That, uh, but. If I found them, what would I do with them? See, yeah. See, I'm trying to follow the, follow the right, the right way, the law, and the policies, and procedures. To get it done right. So, right you know, now. I'm just disappointed. Right. In, yeah. So I'm just disappointed in, in the people of the city of Trenton who are, who are watching this show. You know, you have to think about your daughters, your sons. You know, these are the tax dollars. They have cameras. They can figure out where certain things are at easily. You know, and, and, and I'm just, I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm hurt because, you know, I, I know you, I personally know right. you, and I personally know Naseki. Uh, it, it's just disappointing, and it hurts. The well, if they, if they had followed the, the proper protocol. Protocol, uh, yes. It, they shouldn't have no problem. Mm -hmm. And see, what really has me really disturbed is they actually had a prior investigation mm -hmm. at that house, right, mm -hmm. involving a dog. They sent two detectives to my house, mm -hmm. all right? People from the animal control, and they filed charges against me. About a dog, and you tell me they can't? And I had to hire a lawyer mm -hmm. to defend me to have those charges dropped. They did more investigation- On a dog. On a dog than yeah. they did on my daughter. That's a, that's a shame. Um, and that's the truth. Oh, oh, listen, I've known you for over 20 some years. And I know you're a man that speaks truth, and you're not afraid to say what's on your mind. That's why I am so um, happy. Two detectives. Two came detectives to came to your house. Yeah, uh, investigating a lost dog. So what? Let's talk about your feelings. You know, after the police came to your house, the detectives. Uh, w what was your thinking? Well, I knew as a black man, I knew that I was being confronted with discrimination on an investigation. That's the first thing, mm -hmm. and. I'm a man of faith, right? So I had put my faith that I would be guided and do the right thing. That's why I try to work with the administration. Yes. Right? And knowing that the truth would come out. Mm -hmm. As long as I kept my faith and believed in the situation. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, I've came to this particular point now, right? When I'm going public, mm -hmm. right? And telling the public that I did everything possible. Did everything possible. Even talk to the mayor. Talk to the mayor. And talk the mayor, to Andrew. And the, mayor, and the mayor broke his word. The mayor. Oh well, listen. Uh, and he's a, the Bible says, you know, like I was, I was explaining to you before, mm -hmm. a man's word is is his bond. Well, you know, uh, his, you know, for me, you know, um, Reed uh, has been a, when you look at the city of Trenton has been a disaster. We have more violent crimes and. Fentanyl poisoning, bad. He is a prosecutor. Yeah, prosecutor. So okay, he should understand. He's a prosecutor. He should understand. He should understand. And, and know what should have been done during this investigation. But your daughter, but your daughter is a black child. Right. Basically. Yeah, basically. Basically, right. Yeah. And 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 your daughter is the same as any if, if it was a white child or a Spanish child, or anything else. She should have the. You should have the same type of investigation. She should be having the, the your your daughter should have the same real investigation than any child in the country, uh, in a city like the city of Trenton in they 2022. They violated her constitutional they violated, rights. Yeah, they violated okay. her constitutional rights. And, and, right. and, and people in the city should understand that you have an opportunity. Listen, you know Mr. McCall. They know me. They know you. I know a lot of people in this town. And, 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 people, right. and the people who are listening to this broadcast mm -hmm. Or listen to exactly what I have to the say. The truth. You're, you're, okay. you're, listen, you're a man. I know of, that. Yeah, you're a man of All truth. Right. You're a man of God. And if, if this administration turns its back on me, they're turning their back on most of these black people in this city to show them how they con conduct business mm -hmm. with situations and dealing with black people. Yeah. All right. When they all they know this was not no overdose. I know what an overdose looks like. Mm -hmm. I've seen people overdose. This was a cold right? murder. This was a cold-blooded murder. Yeah. And they should have initiated an investigation, and mm -hmm. they didn't do it. I want, you know, I will, you know, maybe if if people called the mayor's office, 
And the uh, mayor knew it. The mayor knew it. People should call the mayor. Like I said, he know it. He's a, he's a prosecutor. Mm-hmm. He, he knows. If he turns his back on me, he'll turn his back on them. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's what I want to bring out to the, the mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. If he turns his back on me, he'll turn his back on them. They know what kind of person I am. Mm-hmm. Most of these people in Trenton, I know a lot of people in Trenton, mm-hmm. they need to take heed to this. Yeah. Right? Because the snake bite me, it bite them. Yeah, I, you know, listen. Okay. You're, you're, you're definitely right because, you know, if you just look at the city of Trenton the way it is now, bad education, kids are graduating from high school with a 12th grade, from, from 12th grade, can barely read and write, functionally illiterate, violence all over the place, stabbings, shootings, um, stolen cars, um, uh, fentanyl deaths because your daughter wasn't the only one. And, uh, you know, I, I, where are our tax dollars going? I mean, and that should be the question why uh, our guy like yourself and others are paying tax dollars to make sure we have a, a safe city. And if investigation, a situation, someone gets murdered, uh, they should be able to investigate it. There was a young lady that uh, she was a tenant of mine. Mm-hmm. And one of her uh, girlfriends worked at the nursing home. Mm-hmm. Her daughter died about 30 days after the Seiki from the same drug dealer, right, Mm -hmm. sold substance. The lady was so upset from this situation, she moved out of Trenton before I get a chance to talk to her. Wow, you know, it's, you know, and and it's sad because- There's no secret who was selling these drugs, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right? No secret. The only problem that I'm having is the police did not- Do their job. That's all, that's all. And that's all you asked for, and that's all any parent uh, with the situation that happened to their, their child should have an investigation. I mean, that tells you what type of city we have, what type of mayor we have. You know, you sat down with Andrew Bobbitt, who's been an advocate for, post, supposed to be advocate for black people, and uh, he was right there with uh, the mayor and the captain. You know, what's also disturbing, I know rules and regulations change, and I, I, had, I had suggested to the mayor, I understand how overdoses are declared and homicides are declared based on mm-hmm. the law, right? But the law changes. And I thought him, he should realize the difference in the law. And an example I brought up to the mayor was that we all know the mayor is a gay man. Right? Mm-hmm. And I remember years ago when I was in school, even after school, they used to beat up gay guys, mm-hmm. right? But my father, he explained to me a long time ago about difference in gay people and to respect them some people are born so i i never felt that way about gay people right? yeah but they used to beat gay guys up the cops would lock up they not lock up but they would charge the person that did it they would go to court and the court would say oh two two guys fight that's it right mm-hmm. but since then the law has changed right mm-hmm. and if you attack a person like that it's a, it's a crime yeah, I, like right. it, it, it see, definitely it's, is a crime. It's it's a crime. To, and to and, do that, and so right? yeah, we and yeah. You so d- what I'm trying to <clears throat> these laws now where they declare this is an overdose, it needs to be changed, and he should take the lead, mm-hmm. like some of these other municipalities. Yeah, take the lead, right? Yeah, and 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 it, but it's disappointing because you know yeah, the mayor is gay and he supports the LGBT. Uh, he promotes LGBT in the city of Trenton. And uh, it's something a hate crime. it's a hate crime. It's a hate crime, now, right? Yeah, it's a hate crime. It's Definitely a hate, a hate crime. crime. And uh, and you know, to me and everybody else been talking, if it was LGBT or something LGBT, he would. Definitely be on it. Maybe. He would definitely, right. yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe he'd, be, he'd be on it. He'd then. be fighting against, you know, that's figure right. out what happened. That's right. And that's uh, and that's sad because you know your daughter, uh, she has what one child? She had one child. She has one child, right? Yes. And uh, you know, it's yeah. Yep, Imani, what's that? Imani? Imani. 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 And uh, so it, it's just disappointing that when you see the situation happens, you know, and you have, and she has a daughter, Imani, and, uh, you know, Imani now has no mother. Imani doesn't, doesn't know uh, who murdered her mother. You know, it's, and you all as a family and friends have to live with that, that someone murdered my child, my mom, my best friend, my friend's family member, 
and no one and the police force in the city of Trenton, even the Mercer County prosecutor hasn't done anything about it and can care less because she is, to me, a, a, a black girl. Or are they trying to protect the person? Yeah, they're, yeah. I'm, I'm getting to the all point now, they might be trying to protect the drug dealer. All, all, all that is, is true, but it's sad. Sure. It's sad in America. You know, um, but, you know, my hero, I'm sure your hero said, you know, Martin Luther King said, two forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown stands God within the shadows, keeping watch above his own. God is always in the shadow. That person uh, may think he or she may think that they got away with it, mm. but there is a God. Right. You know, there is right. someone, there is a God that's, you know, sees all, knows all, and will bring judgment. That's true. Uh, bring judgment on the police, bring judgment on the mayor, any investigation. Andrew Bobbitt has to be, because he's a, a community activist, he did nothing. And it's sad. It's sad in, in, in 2022, right. in the city of Trenton, you know, uh, with cameras all around, video cameras on, you know, all over the place, they can't figure out what happened or they may know what happened, but they just don't care. Uh, but we're, we're living in 2022 and uh, it, it's, it's sad because, you know, more deaths will happen. They're happening. Yeah, more we're murderers are happening. I mean, and, and, and it's because, it, you know, even with America, you know, uh, and, we have our President Biden, the borders aren't closed. I mean, when you look with these, where fentanyl is coming from, Mexico, and it's also coming uh, through China. That's what they're saying. It, it's right. coming through, it's coming from, yes, Mexico, but it's, it's coming through the borders, and it's coming from China. Pills, candy, anything mm -hmm. that looks like an aspirin, a child can take. You know, you, your, your, your daughter might have thought it was an aspirin. Or anything. I don't know how. She, it yeah, yeah. Like but it looks, it can look like aspirin. It can look like ca uh, candy. Or it looks, or it can be powder on something. Just, you know, uh, somebody said, him, just, you know, wipe, you know, here's a rag. Wipe your face with this, with this rag. And uh, uh, fentanyl, because it's, it comes in powder form, too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I have a friend of mine, um, Jay, her, her, sister died of fentanyl poisoning uh, a few years ago and she had three children and so uh, you know and she knows the pain mothers and sisters know the pain uh, but there was also really no type of investigation like it should be and 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 because we were black you know if if if, if the violence is aren't the violence is killing us bad education is killing us you know ignorance is killing us uh, fentanyl has done a hell of a thing uh, to, you know, we had crack epidemic, you know, fentanyl has, has done a hell, a hell of a thing to destroy, uh, help destroy inner city, black America. And all, you know, also that's the point there, uh, kids, both, uh, Spanish, white American kids are dying in college, dying in high school, fentanyl poisoning in the, and the system really hasn't done really what they needed to do to deal with this fentanyl poison. You know, so we're gonna to go to a, a station break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Daryl McKell Brooks out there on Fire Show. Yeah, we have a picture of uh, a Seiki right there, beautiful daughter. You know, I remember yes. a beautiful daughter. And uh, so we're gonna go right, we're gonna come right back. Uh, we're gonna to go uh, to a station break. This is Daryl McKell Brooks out there on Fry Show. I'd like to thank you all for watching and we'll be right back. Mr. Carl McCall. Welcome to the CannaSense Total Wellness Collective. You're just a few simple clicks away from getting the cannabis products you want and have them delivered right to your home. So how does it work? Don't worry, it's easy. First, go to CannaSense.com. Click the Join Now button. Next, fill out the sponsorship form. If you don't have a sponsor, just type CannaSense in the field. Next, submit the form and wait for your welcome email. Once you receive your welcome email, log into your account. 
Click on Apothecary to see all of the available inventory. Choose your products, pay for your order, and track your package. Remember, delivery times vary by location. Hi, welcome everybody. We're back. This is Daryl McKell Brooks of the On Fire Show, and I have with me Mr. Carl McCall, uh, a great man of the city of Trenton, um, born and raised in the city of Trenton. I know, Mr. McCall, you're back. Fine, Mr. Brooks. Fine. All right. Um, Thank you for having me as a guest. Oh, definitely. We're going to talk right. some more. Okay. I just want to let everybody know about the uh, my new book. Uh, it's called Welcome to America. Uh, it'll be out in a few. About I think it'll be out next week. Welcome to America. Um, how cultural Marxism is slowly destroying America. And I talk about the fentanyl, I talk mm -hmm. about the drugs, the violence, uh, TV shows, the video games, all these things are happening and, uh, in America because it needs to be talked about. You know, also I have the book uh, 37 Days, Disenfranchisement of a Philadelphia Poll Worker. You gotta go check that out, get the book. It's, it's uh, about the 2020 election, but it's also about my autobiography, all about me growing up in the city of Trenton, going through. I, do you have a copy? Yes, I do. Oh, you have a copy? Have you oh, read yeah. my book? Not completely. Okay. <laughs> okay you Not gotta... completely. I've been so involved with yeah, this situation. I, yeah, it's yeah. taken a lot of my you know, time. Oh, definitely. I definitely, definitely. understand right. that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's, it took uh, this new book. It talks about these problems that we're having mm -hmm. in America and society about politicians, you know. So, um, after we got off the air, we're back on now, but after we got off the air, you talked about um, these municipalities. Yes. And what they're doing uh, to fight against fentanyl poisoning. Right. There, there are several municipalities that are, are charging these, these drug dealers with homicide. Mm -hmm. And they're actually... Which alive. they should be. Yeah, right. They should be doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Trenton is the capital of New Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it appears to me that when you look at the rest of the state, and then you look at our capital. We're so we so far behind the rest the rest of the state, right? And we should be the lead unit, the lead city in New Jersey when it comes to uh, development, right? Protecting people's rights, housing those types of things. But Trenton, it's it's far behind as a capital city because of, probably because of the leadership. Yeah, well, well you know, mm -hmm. and this is a perfect example of leadership that's totally knowledgeable and understanding about crime because the mayor, he's a lawyer and he's a prosecutor. Yeah, yeah. And yet still, he's doing nothing. Nothing, you know, and also, you know, you have Andrew Bobbin right there who's been a part of the community who probably known you, met your daughter. He knew my daughter. He knew your daughter. And so, you know, as, you know, Andrew Bobbin who knew, you, who knew your daughter, I mean, I'm like, come on, man, you're the uh, mayor's assistant, walk around with the mayor. You know, you're talking to the mayor every day. I mean, the, Andrew. He's ba a black man. He's a black man in he's America. A, he is a black man mm -hmm. from the black community. I know Andrew Ballard. Mm -hmm. He should be taking the lead. On finding the out. And finding out yeah. how these black, young black ladies mm -hmm. in this city are dying from fentanyl poison and the police department aren't doing nothing. Nothing at all. And, and it's sad. You know, that's why. That's sad. That's very yeah. sad. Well. How could he face himself as a black man? Yeah, and you're, you're definitely right. But also, you know, you know, I, you know, I like to ask the question is, you know, this is also a moral issue. And, um, you know, when you look at what's happening, you know, where are the preachers? Where is Reverend Armstrong? Where is um, uh, Simmons, uh, uh, Simmons, Spencer? You know, where is the, the preacher from... Um, in Ewing Township, uh, uh, now it used to call it Kingdom, now it's called, I can't think of his name, but um, Darius Daniels, you know, you got Darius Daniels, you got Spencer, you got Reverend Armstrong, you got Reverend Harris. I mean, these preachers hold a lot of power in, in, in the city of Trenton and the surrounding areas, and uh, that should be fentanyl poisoning, murder should be, they should be talking about this in their church. They should be doing more, you know, as, as Christians. You know, we have an opportunity uh, to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and talk about these, these social problems. I mean, like, this, like I said before, we got violent crimes, bad education. You know, we have uh, individuals that can't read and write. 
you know, uh, you have all these major serious problems. And, and I talk about my book, Welcome to America, is, you know, there are people like yourself who are like, how is this happening? Well, you have mothers and well, mothers you, and fathers. The, the other day I was, I was, I was thinking, mm -hmm. I was resting in bed, and on my Facebook page, they asked for a creative story. I never created a story. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, how was I going to create a story? And, and for some reason, something came up in my mind that, uh, like I said, a man's word is his bond. Right? It's his bond. So I went on the internet and I looked it up. It's really to get a description of what that meant. And lo and behold, I'm a man of strong faith, like mm -hmm. I said, I'm a believer. And it came up, I just want to read it. Sir. Go ahead. It says, Corinthians 1 19 colon 20. We read as the scripture says, I will destroy human wisdom and discharge their most brilliant ideas. So where does this lead the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made them all look foolish and has shown their wisdom to be useless nonsense. Jesus says, this is Matthew 5, colon 37. Just say a simple yes, I will, or no, I won't. Your word is enough to strengthen your promise for the vow shows that something is wrong. Can anyone, can everyone rely on your word? If not, why not? Consider these things with me. Mm -hmm. And I told you, I'm a man of strong faith. And I know my concern is the concern of many people. Right? Yes, sir. And I know it's going to be resolved. It's not a doubt. In my mind, mm -hmm. it's going to be resolved. No, Martin Luther King said, no lie can live forever. That's right. It's going to be resolved. Truth crust the earth but will rise again. When you can't trust a man's word, mm. it's like the scripture said. Mm -hmm. You got a problem. And the mayor gave me his word. The mayor gave me his word. I spoke with him personally. And I've been trying to reach out to him. And he has completely disregarded yeah, me. and because you're, you know, you know. So I'm telling the people uh -huh. that know me, the people in Trenton that know me, mm -hmm. and know what kind of person I am, to take this in consideration, okay? Because this this impact has hurt, hurt me, and my family, and I'm sure it's hurt relatives and people in their family. My neighbor up the street spoke with me about three weeks ago. This is mm -hmm. on Willow Street. His brother passed away from fentanyl poisoning. Mm -hmm. So it's happening all throughout the city. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned these the pastors in the city, right? They know. They know. They preach these funerals. Yeah. When somebody asks me about how many fit in all this, I tell them, go ask you. Go ask Anderson. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ask them about the young people dying. They classifying as overdoses that are dying in this city. And it's not over. Uh, yeah, it's not okay? over. It's not it's, over. It is no secret. And these pastors preach these funerals. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So they should they should be concerned about it just like I'm concerned about. Yeah. It. Yeah. I, it's, right. Yeah. They're killing our young people. It's and it's, the city is not doing nothing. Yes. You, you know, you're definitely right. Because, okay. it, yeah, it's some it's a, a it's a it's a homicide. It's also a moral issue. And the preachers are preaching, you know, of uh, 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 I like the, to talk to all of them. Yes. Yeah, sit, uh, sit I, 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 like, I would really like to talk to each one. Oh, yeah, of them definitely. I, to I, see what is what what are your what, what is their projections on how to address this problem in the city of and other cities too. So, you know, one other thing I've learned about the preachers. They're you killing know, young people. Yeah, and you know, you can't go, and, and when it comes to this type of uh, situation and when it's, you know, homicide, you can't go to the politicians. The preachers have the Bible in their hand. The preachers know, because this is nothing new. We had crack, you know, we had the, the drug problem in the 70s, you know, and it, and, you know, and so they know history. Well, and and they, but it, it's different now. Well, well I understand. When, I understand when, it's, I, when I was when I was coming up in Trenton, the communications mm -hmm. between the churches and the communities mm -hmm. was more open. Mm -hmm. the preachers were more involved. They, you know, they walked the streets. They talked to the people. They had different activities with everybody in the community. So. It's, it's things a little different. And, and um, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, things. But, uh, are, but the, the issues that they are well aware of, they should be addressed because this this is impacting their their people. Yeah, and so yeah, you're definitely right. You know, like I said, you have these three or four or five pastors. You know, Shallow, Rev, uh, Darrell Armstrong, Reverend Harris, Galilee Baptist Church, uh, Simeon Spencer. I uh, can't think of the name of this, the church, but and also Darius Daniels. Change all these individuals and and other community activists. You know, it right. should be coming together and going to the city and going to the mayor. That's right. But are you going to ask the question, or who, whose pocket are you in? I mean, it, it's, it's sad. It's sad, and it's, uh, it's, it's the, the things that I see, you know, as, a, as an activist myself, Christian, and who've known you for at least over 20-some years, you know, the things that I see is so disappointing uh, in this city. And, uh, you know, and, and when do you hold these politicians, the mayor, especially the mayor, because the buck stops there at his office? When do we hold these people accountable? When do you hold the preachers accountable? You know, you, and you know, also, you, you got to talk about city council, you know, city council members. When do we hold them accountable and, and ask, start asking some serious questions? The election is November, November the 8th. That's this coming Tuesday. You know, you got to and you got to ask yourself in the city of Trenton, um, where do you stand? You got to ask the where do you stand on the mayor and, and the continuously failure of the city of Trenton and what's happening to our society and the society has gone mad when it's OK not to investigate a, 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 a child of God, a black woman uh, who died and other black women who had died who've been murdered, homicide, and not to investigate it. When do the people in the city of Trenton sure, right. wake up? When do you wake up people in the city of Trenton? No lie can live forever. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Martin Luther King said this stuff. You know, and we should be able to rise up. And if we don't rise up and break the backbone of the power structure and wake the people up, wake up the politicians, if they don't do their job, if the police force doesn't do their job, then they have to change. The chief doesn't change do his job. Right. The That's Mercer right. County prosecutor, the county change. executive, you're allowing and you keep voting the same type of people in office, in office that has failed you, the past mayors have failed you completely. And I, you know what? And, and you have to look at it as it is, and it's, it, it's, it was Reed and before it, other politicians, other mayors, you know, this stuff didn't happen overnight. You yeah. know, this stuff that, you know, yeah. this, this fentanyl problem is going on, I guess, for the past six or seven years, you know, and, yeah. um, and so we have to wake up people in the city of Trenton, you know, go to city hall, protest, demand, send letters, emails. You know, you have to demand change. You cannot allow this to go. Here's a man that has a, a daughter. He loved his daughter. And he has, uh, you now have a, a daughter that uh, his granddaughter doesn't have a mother. And she's from the city of Trenton. There's things that you can do. When do you wake up, people? When do you stand up and rise as a people, as Trenton residents? But it's, it's so many people that have been infected by this fentanyl, mm -hmm. homicides and yeah. deaths, mm -hmm. you know? I understand my daughter is just one of many victims, right? But I'm sure if you talk to people in the city of Trenton, you'd be surprised of how many have children, cousins, and relatives that have died you're, from fentanyl. You're definitely right? right. You're definitely right. You're and definitely, they're not doing nothing. Nothing, and, and I am so happy. They're not doing nothing. I am so happy that you- But, however, uh -huh. Opioid crisis, they're suing all the big drug companies, yeah, millions yep. of dollars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if something like this, fentanyl, which they classify as an overdose, which is not an overdose. No, it's not. It's homicide. It's, it's homicide. Poisoning. It's poisoning. It's poisoning. That's mm -hmm. what they got to understand. It's poison. And they sit around and don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. And, and you're definitely right. And so this coming Tuesday. They got to replace those people. <clears throat> yeah, you have to replace those you gotta people. You got to get rid of them. And you have to the, replace the politicians. You got to make a decision. The preachers, your actors. We pay their we pay their salary. Yeah, you pay their salary. We pay their salary. They represent us. They represent yes. So when we bring these concerns to them, they got to address our concerns. Yeah, and, and change and, and, the laws. Change the laws. 
you know, That's right. it, it, you have the, you have the technology, you have the cameras all over the city of Trenton, and tell me that you can't find can't out find them. what's happening. But also, the mayor, people like Andrew Bobbitt, and also these all these big time preachers that you go to church every day. You know, I remember you know when I used to you know watch documentaries in the '60s and the '70s. You had these black preachers speaking out. Yes, in the right. '70s, speaking out, standing up fighting for the people rights, you know, and, um, and there's nothing now. They just came to accept it. You know, you know, Martin Luther King also said, I love Martin Luther King. He said, darkness cannot put out darkness. Only light can put out darkness. And right now you, the people are in office. The people are, are preaching. I hate to say it, but they're in the dark. They can't, they can't fight darkness because they're part of darkness themselves. You need individuals that have the light, that love people, you know, love the city of Trenton and will fight for justice, mm -hmm. you know, and fight for the truth, not be afraid. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is what we have in the city of Trenton and all around, you know, people are afraid. Even and we go to the white communities, you know, their people, they're, they're, these people are, are speaking out. They're trying to stop this. That's right. They're speaking out. Why are you afraid yep. of right. speaking out in the city of Trenton? Stand up, rise up. You know, we might have, I was, I was looking at a documentary the mm -hmm. other day and they were talking about uh, uh, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. How did, and you can talk about Huey Newton, H. Rack Brown and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. They all had differences of opinion mm -hmm. on how to address our problem with racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. But they were on one accord, all right, when it came to how to resolve it, you know, and get it done. And they love their people. And, and, that's, and that's what they did. And that's what these people got to understand, too. Mm -hmm. We might have a difference of opinion of how things should get done, but we need to come together mm -hmm. and get it done. Yo, know, I, I definitely, uh, listen, I definitely support that. I definitely believe it should happen. Right. Uh, but when you have individuals that who are about themselves, and don't care about, they care more about LGBT rights, painting the city LGBT, running for office, I'm LGBT, but not dealing with the crisis of the fentanyl poisoning, not dealing with the problem of education, not dealing with the problem of violence in our city. Because there's ways, you know, there's ways to fix, this is, all this stuff is, you know, man-made crisis. Right. Man did this. You know, I remember the uh, speech John F. Kennedy American University, 1963. He's and he talked about Russia, the Soviet Union. He said all. He said these are man-made problems, and man can fix these problems. That's right. John F. Kennedy said that. You know, and so these are man-made issues in our community, and we as a people, we can fix these problems. But you have to have the will, the courage, the strength, the love of people right. uh, to fix these problems. But if you don't have the love, the, the, the joy in your heart, the empathy for people, then why are you holding office? Why are you in church preaching? I, know, I noticed one thing yeah. that struck my attention. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I was looking at a program on television and they were, they were talking about how sm even small communities, they would have these parades, right? Mm -hmm. And then the parade would bring all the community together yeah. and everybody would enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. Last year, we didn't have a Christmas parade. Mm. We didn't have a Christmas parade for the kids or anybody to enjoy. Mm -hmm. I never thought in my lifetime I would see the capital city not have a Christmas parade. Mm -hmm. I used to perform in parades when mm -hmm. I was in the Cavaliers Precision mm -hmm. Drill Team. So I, I, I performed all over New Jersey and all up and down the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the enjoyment mm -hmm. that people will would experience during a parade, mm -hmm. how communities come, come together, mm -hmm. right, and participate. And I watched the kids, how they enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I could not understand how this administration mm -hmm. would allow this city to go along without having a Christmas parade, and these people didn't say nothing. Yeah, you're definitely not right. Nothing. But they have an LGBT parade. Nothing. <laughs> they should, you, you, you talk about the ministers and stuff, yeah. Don't question it at all. Don't question that at all. Don't question it at all. A Christmas parade for the kids in the city of Trenton yeah. to enjoy themselves, mm -hmm. to watch this community come together. Mm -hmm. 
and you're going to have a mayor, mm-hmm. and they're not questioning that this year? Yeah, so you're, you're definitely right. And even, like I you said know, before... Like how I, could they let something like that happen? And, and, it's and disgusting. It's, it's disgusting. And, and like I said before we go, it's also disgusting when you have kids that are graduating from the 12th grade on a third, fourth grade reading level, math level. But you want to give out book bags, but you can't provide them with the greatest quality of education. You can't really pro- deal with, you're not dealing with the issues of violence in our community. And, you know, and, and God is, is, you gotta understand that, you know, God is always on our side. And before we go, mm-hmm. I just want to, I just want to say, I just want to thank you for coming on. But I just want to say also Martin Luther King in his speeches, he said about death. And, you know, this should give you some comfort. You know, he said that death is not an end, but a beginning. Death is not a period which ends this great sentence of life, but a comma that punctuates it to more loftier significance. You know, mm-hmm. you, you need to know that. As a Christian, you, I'm sure you do know that. I do. And, uh, you know, death is not an end, people. And, and when you die, something, you know, you, there is a, a, a special place. And especially mm-hmm. when you get murdered, uh, like the, the way your daughter was murdered, you know, God is always on the side of righteousness. That's right. Righteousness. That's right. And so I just want to thank you. Well, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to you know, come express myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in faith, right? And I know whatever corrections will, will, in the future will be taken. Mm-hmm. I know and this these, is a and lot these, of... And these, and these devils that, yeah. that I'm dealing with. Mm-hmm. I know it's a lot of... Gonna be dealing with I know, I know, I know it's that a, too. I know it's a lot of stress on you. Sure. How are you dealing with that? Well, I was, like I put my faith in Lord Jesus Christ and, mm-hmm. and faith in Him, and I know, and mm-hmm. I, and I know it's going to be taken care of. Yeah, and it's not a doubt in my mind. Yeah. It's going to be taken. Oh care yeah, of, definitely. Right? You know, one, I'm a strong believer. One way or another, and you I, know, all I have to do is control my feelings mm-hmm. and understand mm-hmm. that He's watching me and mm-hmm. going to protect over me and believe in Him. Mm-hmm. It's so, His promise. Yeah. Other than that, I'm not even concerned about it. You the man. You the man. You the man. That's right. And so this is Daryl McKell Brooks on the Fire Show. Please share this, people. Yes, you have to share this um, and, 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 and let people know what happened. And before I go, I always quote Martin Luther King. And he says that you got to understand, people, that Martin Luther King was one of the greatest uh, leaders, activists uh, in American history. And he said that we're all caught up in this great inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. And whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. It's true. And that I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be unless I am what I ought to be. Then he quotes the poet John Donne says, no man is an island. Every man is a piece of the continent or part of the main. Then he goes on to say that any man's death diminishes me but because I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never send to know whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. It tolls for you, people, that you have to stand up, okay? Um, rise up and break the backbone of the power structure. That's what King said. That's what King said. We have to stand up. Uh, November 8th, you heard Mr. McCall. You heard what the mayor did not do. He promised that he would do something. Andrew Bible was there. Andrew Bobby did not hold this mayor accountable. He was right. He's the mayor's right hand guy. House man, Andrew Bobby. So you have to decide what are you going to do? I was to say, go out and, sp- and speak out, protest, organize on behalf of the Seiki and other ones yeah, that that's have right. yeah, it's other that will have ones. murdered and know that this is not going to stop unless you Stand up, people. You have to stand up, okay? Bringing people together, inner city, suburb, black and white, Spanish, from all over the city and all over the state to speak out about what's happening in the city of Trenton. Go to City Hall, but make sure your, your vote is, um, is the vote of your choice. And I'll make sure you have to understand what's happening. You know, I talked to Kathy McBride and, and and Kathy McBride stands by you 110%. She is watching. Well, Kathy was born and raised in the city. 
Matter she of fact, Kathy lived up the street. Mm -hmm. from, she understands. Because she's a black woman. A black woman. Born and raised. Born and city. raised. She knows the, the issues struggles. in the city. Yeah, she understands, she understands the struggles. She understands the issues in the city, yes, right? Yes, uh, yes. And uh, she, wants, she wants to change this. Mm -hmm. She wants to change this. She's talking to our experts, right? Mm -hmm. And some of the background information I gave her on other cities that are charging these people with homicides, and uh, they're going to jail. Going to jail. Right? And they should go to jail. They should go, they should go to jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe me, if it hasn't impacted you so far, it's going to impact you. Yes. And with right? that, yes. And, that's right. And, and with that, I'd just like to thank you all. Pray for Mr. McCall. Yes, pray for me. And pray for his, his granddaughter and his family who has suffered this, this great loss. Pray for the ones that are, who are suffering now because they have had serious loss. Mm -hmm. All right, I thank you all. And pray for them devils who aren't doing nothing. Yeah, pray they for need a lot of prayer yeah, too. Yeah, you know, that's what Jesus said, love your enemies, bless that's them right. that curse you. Pray for those pray who for despitefully them. use you. That's what our Lord and Savior for Jesus Christ. Uh, speak out, go to these churches, speak out, let that's them right. know what's happening. If they don't um, speak out, then why are you going to their church? This is Daryl McCall Brooks on the On Fire Show. I'd like to thank you all for watching. God bless, peace.